Did you know that you can have your yard or garden certified as a backyard wildlife habitat? It's true. The National Wildlife Federation has had this program in place for many years. We all know that human activity has devastated wildlife habitat, eliminating habitat not just locally, but on a global scale. According to recent studies, we have eliminated more than 50% of Earth's forests since the rise of humans. This has pushed wildlife, from the small insects and pollinators, to birds and every size mammal, into ever-shrinking forests and wilderness areas. But we can make a difference by inviting wildlife back to our own yards. I first heard of backyard wildlife habitats from my employer, Subaru of Indiana Automotive, who had set aside a large portion of their land as a registered backyard wildlife habitat. So in 2010, I did the same, just on a much smaller scale. There are five requirements to get your garden or yard certified as a wildlife habitat. First is food. This can be native plants that provide nectar, seeds, nuts, fruits, berries, pollen, and even insects eaten by a variety of wildlife. This can also be supplemented with feeders to supply a natural food source. Me personally, I have a variety of bird feeders around my yard. I have berry producing trees, an apple tree, black raspberry bushes. I've also set aside a large chunk of my yard that I'm allowing to go back to nature, planting native flowering plants. It's still a work in progress. Second is water. All animals need water to survive. I've set up some bird baths and have a very small pond accessible to smaller animals. I'm also lucky to live within a few hundred yards of the Fairfield Lakes. Third is cover. Wildlife needs places to find shelter to hide from predators or protection from storms. This could be thick bushes, logs, or just a brush pile. I have all of the above which seems to make the rabbits, raccoons, and opossums pretty happy. Fourth is places to raise young. I have several birdhouses posted up, and the brush piles seem to be great for rabbits. And the woodpeckers, well, they love my trees. Fifth, and finally, is sustainable practices. This could be catching rainwater, controlling invasive species, eliminating chemicals, reducing erosion, composting, and reducing lawn areas. As mentioned earlier, I've reduced my lawn and allowing native plants to take over, constantly pulling invasives like garlic mustard, and I never use chemicals or pesticides. Is it a worthwhile endeavor? It is for me. I live in a rural setting. Over the years, I've attracted a multitude of raccoon, opossum, rabbit, dozens of bird species, squirrel, chipmunk, frogs and toads, butterflies and fireflies, even deer have bedded down in my yard. Maybe that's why my son Catfish loves wildlife so much. There is even an animal trail easily traceable through my yard, from the trees to the brush pile to under my bird feeders. We are friends to the natural world. Part of this is because we recognize that we are part of nature. We are not above it. We must live in harmony with nature. Nature provides. If this appeals to you, check it out for yourself at the National Wildlife Federation website, nwf.org. Of course, you don't have to be certified to create a backyard habitat. Do what you can. Every little bit helps. When it comes to our pollinators, our very lives may depend on it.